Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today on our Arduino tutorials, we're going to be talking about the Arduino and SPI communication in respect to the Arduino. SPI standing for Serial Peripheral Interface. Uh, this communication protocol is similar to that of I2C. You remember we did that? I did that video a little while ago. In that, it is a method of data transfer that uses a clock and data line. Now, this is the first video I'm going to do on this. Uh, this, the first form I'm going to do is very basic. It's just uh, the Arduino talking to a chip, and that chip in this case is the 74HC164, and this is a serial, uh, this is a shift register. It takes in a serial communication, in this case the SPI, and it outputs a parallel signal. So you can use this to take uh, two pins in this case and control up to eight. So. With that, let's go ahead and build this circuit. Um, I'm just going to put that in there. Uh, I've got the data sheet open so I know what I'm doing. Uh, to start with, we're going to choose two pins. One's going to be the clock line and one's going to be the data line. So I'm going to choose the clock line to be pin 4 on the Arduino. So uh, let's see here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the clock line in this case is pin 8, which is right here, I believe. There we go. And then the data line, which I'll choose to be Arduino pin 5. Now, on this chip, it actually has two data pins, but I'm just going to go ahead and connect the two data pins together, the two data pins being pins 1 and 2 on the chip. Uh, pins 1 and 2 are the two data lines. They're connected um, to the actual shift register via an AND gate. So it only gets sent into the register if they're both true. So by connecting them both together, we can always know that it's always true. Uh, I'm going to connect the power, which is this pin here, to the 5 volt line. That's here, VN, ground, ground, 5 volts. And then fold these down. The ground pin, which is down here on the bottom left, like so. Fold these back and out of the way. And then the last pin I'm going to connect is the reset pin, or the master reset in this case. Uh, the master reset is active low, which means in order for it to reset the chip, it has to be tied to low. Uh, in this example, I'm not going to be showing you how to reset it, but so I'm just going to connect it to the 5 volt line so that the chip is never reset. Okay. Now to demonstrate uh, how this works, I've going, we're going to use those two pins I mentioned, the data and clock pin, to control four LEDs. Now you can control eight LEDs, but there are four pin there are four pins on one side of this chip which are easy to get access to, and so I'm just going to hook those up. So I'm going to hook these up to pins three, four. Come on, four. Gonna there we go. Three, four, five, oh, and then finally pin six. And these are all being connected to a. I want to make sure I can get the polarity right. These are all being connected to a <coughs> power rail, so that I can just take. There we go. So there's four LEDs, so I can just take the power rail and then connect that straight to ground. Go and connect to ground. There we go. Ground. There we go. Okay. So there we go. Um, now you may be wondering why I'm not using a resistor attached to any of these LEDs. Uh, the reason is that if you look in the data sheet for this chip, it specifies that the maximum output current is 25 milliamps, which is well below the dangerous level at 5 volts for these LEDs, so I uh, shouldn't have to worry about them burning out. So with that, let's go ahead and look at the code. So I've got the two basic functions, the setup and loop. Uh, we're going to de define the two pins we're using. Um, so pin mode 4, that's the output, that's an output, and we define that as the clock pin. And then pin mode pin 5, that's also an output, and that's going to be defined as the data pin. And I'm going to make a variable called data, 
spell that right, there we go. And data is going to be the data we shift out, or we're going to transfer over the SPI in, through SPI. So uh, for the Arduino, there is a method which handles this very basic form of SPI communication called shift out. And it works like this. First, you're going to tell it the pin you're using to transfer data. That's pin 5 in our case. Uh, then the clock pin, pin 4. And then the order you're going to send the data out in, MSB first or LSB first. In this case, most significant bit or least significant bit first. You don't really have to worry about what that means right now. It's just a, when I say most significant bit, it's the it is the bit that carries the most significant value in a binary sequence. So the most significant bit in a byte of data is the 2 to the 7th bit, and the least significant bit is the 2 to the 0th bit. Uh, for an integer, I don't know what the Arduino integer length is, but most significant bit would be 2 to whatever that is, and uh, again, lowest would be 2 to the 0. So it's just changing the order. If you say MSB first, LSB first will be will send out that data in the reverse order. So it just comes down to preference or depending on what you you the chip you're trying to talk to. In this case it doesn't matter. So we're just going to send MSB first and then the variable you want to send in this case data. <coughs> Excuse me. So what this method does is it handles all of the clock pulses and all the appropriate data pulses and it all the timing. It's great. You don't have to deal with any of the hassle. So just some overhead to take care of. We're going to increment the data variable. And then we're going to say if data is greater than or equal to 15, we're going to clear data. Actually, I'm going to make that 16. And then we're going to add a delay of about a second. Actually, exactly one second. So remember we had four LEDs. What this is going to do is it's going to take the bits we're sending and those the data we're sending and show it as four bits. So it's going to l give a parallel representation of the binary serial data which we're sending. Now because we have four bits to play with, the four LEDs, that gives you a maximum combination of 16 different light arrangements. So that's why I set this to 16. So you'll see 1 through 16 as represented in binary. So if we just upload this to the board, we'll see what it does. OK, so if I just go ahead and plug in the board and we apply power, there we go. And if I turn off the light, you can see the LEDs a little better. And there we go. So you can see that after every one second delay, the de uh, the data variable is being incremented, and the it's being shifted out to the shift register, and that's converting the serial data into parallel data. And what we have here is essentially just a binary counter. So that's four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Reset. One, two. Three. And there we go. So that is the most basic form of SPI communication on the Arduino. Um, I'm going to do another one of these, which uh, will show a little more complex communication uh, between this Arduino and another. So until then, I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.